I get so many questions about this, especially with the Skunk Works vlogs, that I decided that it's time to go ahead and revisit this discussion, but this time throwing in a little bit of a visual aid to make things a little bit easier to understand. And that question being, how to balance the airflow inside of your case. And what really makes people confused is the fact that I have five exhaust fans on Skunk Works and only three intakes, yet I claim I'm making positive pressure. So how in the hell is that possible? Well, today we're gonna talk about how I achieved that. And by the end of this video, if I did my job correctly, you guys will also be able to balance the airflow inside of your case. With its specifically tuned copper base and maintenance-free plug-and-play operation, the EVGA 980Ti Hybrid offers ultra-fast gaming performance at the lowest temperatures possible. Click the link in the description for more details. Now, I have talked about this in the past, and if you want to kind of get the complete story, then make sure you guys check out the previous video right here before moving forward with this one. But if you've already seen that video, or you're just morbidly curious about how I'm achieving this airflow with three intakes and five exhausts and getting positive pressure, then continue watching. You might actually learn something, and maybe I'll actually teach something. It's kind of the point here. <laughs> So there are three different types of airflow. There is positive pressure. That is where there is more air going into the envelope. Now I'm always gonna to refer to this as an envelope and not just a case because remember this applies to all things, homes, anything that has movement of air is going to be pretty much based on the envelope or the container, if you will. Now, positive pressure is where you have more air going into the space than you have being exhausted. Now, exhausting doesn't mean just the, the assistance of air being moved out of the case through an exhaust fan. It could just be vents. Vents are also exhausts and they're being, the air is being pushed out of the vent by the air coming in. But because you have more air entering than exiting, you end up with a slight amount of pressure in there which pushes air out of any cracks and crevices and vents that it can find. Now, of course, you're going to want to promote healthy airflow where all of that work is not being placed on the intake fans inside of your case or your envelope or your space, or your container or your room or your office or whatever. I mean, this all applies to air conditioning as well. HVAC, technically, not necessarily air conditioning, but you want to promote where the air goes across the case because you want air moving across things like your heat sinks on your VRAM, your heat sinks on your motherboard. You want air making its way into your graphics card, air across your hard drives. And that's a lot of, that's, that's a lot to ask on your intake fans to handle all of that movement of air. So you wanna promote healthy airflow across the case by having some exhaust fans. Now, if you have too much exhaust fan uh, airflow, then you'll have the fans trying to pull more air out than is being supplied by the fans bringing air in. Now that's called negative air pressure. And what's gonna happen here is that you are gonna be asking the rear fans to do more work than the front fans, and in order to achieve their job, they've gotta pull that air from somewhere. I mean, you can't have the fan blades moving and air not moving across it. That's just not the way physics works. So it's gonna pull that volume from anywhere it can. Now that's gonna be your different vents and cracks and crevices inside of your case, not just from your intake fans. So air is gonna come around the side of the intake fans, it's gonna come from the bottom, it's gonna come in, from in between the door panels, and all cases pretty much have different types of louvers and vents that are not necessarily filtered and or have fans on them. So you're gonna start pulling air in from places that you don't want, which is going to be promoting additional dust accumulation inside of your case. So positive air pressure, because we're pushing air out of those vents, means that you're gonna be promoting uh, less dust making its way into your case as long as you have uh, air filters on your front fans, but you're not gonna, you're at least not gonna be pulling dust in through the different vents and stuff. Now the third type on here, which is probably the hardest to achieve because there's a lot to account for, is going to be a neutral pressure or a balanced pressure. And that's where you have equal airflow of air in versus air out. Now I say it's the hardest to achieve simply because of the fact that there is a lot to account for. If you're using water cooling like I am, you have to consider the fact that the radiators are gonna be introducing a bit of resistance to that air Airflow. And in a case like Skunk Works here, in the case of, and in a case, of, get it? And in a case like Skunk Works, my front fans are non-filtered and pretty much non-obstructive. So they're getting like full open space airflow in there. Now that brings me to the next point of today's video, which is how I'm able to achieve positive airflow in a case like this, where I have three intakes and five exhaust fans. Now I've got four exhaust fans on the upper 480 rad on the top of Skunk Works pushing air out the top. We want the air to go out the top if we can, because that is the natural airflow. As heat rises, it's gonna wanna move its way up. So we don't wanna work against the natural uh, radiation and heat and convection and things like that. And I've got one exhaust fan on the back, pretty much, I don't even need that 
but I have it there simply because of the fact that I am already running a very positive pressure in the case, and I just don't like the way it looks sitting there bare and open. But the way positive pressure is able to be achieved when you have less intakes than exhaust is very, very simple. Don't overcomplicate this. A lot of folks forget the simple fact that the number of fans has nothing to do with the pressure whatsoever. I know that sounds like a really bold statement, but listen, follow me on this. The number of fans, either on intake or exhaust, has nothing to do whatsoever with the way the case low is balanced, positive or negative. It has to do with volume and RPM. So I've got the three fans running right now at about 60% speed because I'm using the, the seven volt adapters on there and they are the uh, Corsair Airflow Quiet Edition fans, which are already only what, 1200 RPM fans. So they're running very, very low. Uh, about 900 RPMs, and then I've got the motherboard controlling the fans for the radiator and the exhaust. So the way that I'm able to balance this airflow and get positive pressure, which is what I want, is by having more RPM and volume entering the front of the case than what the fans are actually exhausting. Now, if I was to ramp those five exhaust fans up and put those to full speed, then I'm going to instantly achieve negative pressure. And in fact, we can talk about that. Now there's a lot of ways that you can actually check the balance of your airflow. And rather than spending a ton of money on things like flow meters that are just not going to be important to you unless you're doing a lot of case reviews or fan reviews, um, then I would say go the simple route of simply getting yourself a dollar pack of incense. You can get them at craft stores, a lot of grocery stores sell these. And the nice thing about them is one, they're gonna make the room smell really nice. And two, uh, they give off a decent amount of smoke that you can actually visibly see what is happening with the airflow. Now I like to actually put a couple of these together when I'm burning them, that way I have more smoke, especially when I'm dealing with the amount of airflow that I am here on Skunk Works. Um, but it's really, really cheap. All you gotta do is light them, and then once the end turns red, it will start to give off a plume of smoke, and then you can just start to wave it around different parts of your case. Put it in front of your fans, make sure that it's pulling the air in. On the intake fans, you can get a very good visual representation of how much air is making it into your case, but obviously putting it in front of the fans means that you're going to see movement of the smoke. But if you really wanna know what's happening with your case, putting it in front of the fans doesn't really tell you anything. You want to put this around the different creeks, uh, creeks, the different cracks and vents in your case because that's gonna tell you what's happening with your case flow. So in the case of Skunk Works here, if I hold it around the slotted vents on the front of the case, nothing is happening. No air is making its way into there, which is telling me that right now, at least in the top portion of the case, we are not dealing with negative pressure whatsoever. And the moment I start to put this towards the back of the case where I've got a much larger honeycomb slash you know, type of vent in there, you can see we've got a lot of airflow being pushed out of there. Now it's pretty obvious I've achieved a positive pressure on the bottom of the case because I've got four 140 millimeter intake fans and only two 280 millimeter exhaust fans. But one of the things I did to make sure that I can promote as much exhausting as I can of the bottom because the bottom part of the case gets really hot with the three overclock uh, tight nexes in there is I have those two 280 fans running 100% at all times. So when the system is not actually under load and those bottom fans are not starting to speed up with the PWM control, then I'm actually dealing with a little bit of negative pressure in there, which is fine. A uh, little bit of dust is gonna make its way in there, but again, they're not filtered anyway. But once the CPU starts to ramp up and the GPUs ramp up, then those fans speed up and we achieve positive pressure where we're getting as much airflow through there as we possibly can't possibly Positively. Now my recommendation is always to go with positive pressure simply because it's clean and it's going to promote the best cooling. But whether or not you're dealing with water cooling or air cooling, it is still very, very relevant to keep the airflow in mind. Your radiators are going to need air also, obviously. So you wanna make sure that you've got plenty of air supply making its way into your case. Obviously the easiest way to do that, as I said, is to get yourself a very simple fan controller with a dial, and then you can start to dial up those fans slowly and play with the smoke, and then get it balanced just right. And then if you don't like it, you can play around with it and test the temperatures and see what happened. Anyway guys, I hope today's video has helped you a little bit more regarding positive pressure, negative pressure with the visual representation of what's actually actually happening and uh, tell me what you guys are doing. Are you guys conscious about the types of fans that you're running and the airflow situation inside of your cases or do you just fill up all the fan slots and let them go and let nature and physics sort it out? Sound off down in the comments and as always guys, thanks for watching this, today's video. Um, if you guys are Amazon shoppers and you can help support the channel by looking down in the description, I've got a few Amazon affiliate links in there. I'm working on other countries 
Uh, I've had some complaints from people saying, Jay, why don't you have a German one? Why don't you have an Italian one? Why don't you have, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There's, I have to fill out separate application for all of those and it's a lot of work. So I'm working on it, guys. But anyway, thanks for watching today's video. As always, I hope you learned something that's most important to me. I want to take the knowledge out of my head and give it to you. If I could just plug into your brain and give it to you like the Matrix, I would do that. But then again, we wouldn't have as much fun, would we? And trust me, I don't want you guys seeing what else is in my head. Man, you wanna talk about a scary place to be.